Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. In this video, I'm going to look in the Soul Forge and give you my opinion on what I think is good and bad in there. What's worth crafting and what's worth avoiding. But the same as every Monday, what I always recommend is going to the shop, going over to the weekly event and making sure you grab the weekly new troop. This is Wu Hao. What she do? She enchants an ally and gives three magic to them, then creates 12 gems of one of their mana colours. So, yeah, that's quite a lot of gems. That's, um, especially if there's, say, 10 there already, that will have a high chance of getting a extra turn on the four match out of that. But yeah, just a so-so troop, nothing fantastic at all. But um, yeah, effectively free, and what I always do is get enough of these to take them to Mythic if you have enough glory, which... I'm going to do like that, because you get all that extra stuff as well, extra arcade blade train, train stones in this case, more glory keys and gold keys as well, so definitely worth doing, and while I'm here, I often go to this and make sure you grab the maximum amount of them as well if you do have the extra glory. Right, now to the Soul Forge itself, we'll start with the weapons. Right, I'm not going to do these ones that are here all the time, like Trick and Treat and Duskbringer, Soul of Xanathos, etc. They're here all the time and in previous Soul Forge videos, so no need to repeat. But these are new, what's, or not here all the time anyway. So, Hammer of Shentang. Removes all yellow gems, deals damage to an enemy boosted by gems removed. If the enemy is from Shentang, deal double damage. So, we've got to not use yellow to make this effective, because you remove yellow without actually getting any benefit from them at all so this works better if your entire team doesn't use yellow and the enemy has to be from Shantang so yeah nothing fantastic about that you have to use that in a very specific situation but completist if you don't have it and you've got nothing else to spend your gems on then may as well get it anyway sky hero destroy a column for every yellow gem destroyed create four red gems so yeah another completest one there these ones are there all the time as I said a minute ago these curse breaker ones are only there because I've got the soul forge to level 20 and I'll go over those in a separate video oops oh, that's it now we've got a cobaltine wand explode a lot of red gems this will vary upon your magic level and what level you are in the game Grant a random status effect to all Shantang allies, then summon a Shantang troop. So that's a pretty nifty weapon. Very good for generating mana for the entire team. Um, uses green and blue, so it's not going to charge itself. So you do have to make sure you have at least one troop on your team that uses red. And if you do, then you are going to generate mana for them. And because they explode red gems, you will pick up mana for the rest of the team at the same time. And it's got a summon. So really good and very effective in a team full of Shantang allies because they all get a status effect which could be barrier could be enchant reflect or more all all handy things to have hook sword is this going to have something like the mechanic where it pulls someone to the front or something like that let's see deals damage to an enemy boosted by Shantang allies and then no it's not then create a mix of six red and yellow gems for each each Shantang ally so no pull to the front mechanic, which like I was expecting, judging by its name. But um, yeah, one of those standard weapons that we're seeing each week now for the different kingdoms, where you get a mix of two different colours for each ally from that kingdom. Um, maybe effective if you've got red and yellow in your in your team for the um, this week's event. But this the actual colour itself uses brown and purple, so it's not going to give itself any charge so you do have to make sure you have shantang allies that use red or yellow or ideally both in your side if you're going to try and use this for this week's event and that is why overall i personally i prefer this one because as long as you've got one red troop in your team you're going to generate mana for them and um, for everybody else as well regardless of their color because when you explode a gem you explode that gem and all the color on all the gems around it and then you get summon as well and those status effects. So um, yeah, for the event, unless you're specifically got uh, red and yellow troops in your team, I prefer a Cobaltine Wand. Doom the Libram. Deal an incredibly low amount of scatter damage, plus four per tempering level, 
Then create a mix of six green gems and skulls for every green enemy. Give three magic to all allies, and if the enemy has a doom, give five more. So these ones for me are nowhere near as good as the ones that the dooms that change a certain color to a doom skull. They are just simply the best doom, doomed weapons for me, just hands down. These ones that do scatter damage, I don't quite understand why it's so low compared to the other ones that change a certain gem to a doom skull, because they are just so much more powerful. Um, so, pretty situational as well, and if it goes wrong, it can massively set up the other team. The good thing about the other doomed weapons, like I just mentioned, that change a certain colour to a Doom Skull, you can see clearly whether that's going to work or not before you cast it. Make sure you can get a four match to, to Doom Skulls, for example. This, you have to be fighting all green enemies to make it mostly effective. So if that spell goes wrong, because you're creating a mix of six green gems and skulls, if it goes wrong, you're setting up the other team in a massive way. They're going to have a load of green gems for their team, and that's not the idea of a weapon to um, set up the other team. So um, don't recommend that, but uh, if it's something you haven't got and you want it for completest reasons or to try something new now and again, up to you. Light Staff deals damage to an enemy and deal double damage if there's Light Storm, create a Light Storm. So yeah, effective in the yellow team, but um, nothing fantastic either. So no great weapons there today. I quite fancy that Cobaltine wand. I should probably grab that absolutely later on. Now onto the troops. So I'm not going to go over the troops that are here all the time. Uh, Dark Smith Drenzer is not here all the time. He's only there because I have the Soul Forge to level 20 again. I shall look at him when I eventually craft him. I've only got a few more Cursed Walnuts to get before he's able to be crafted. I say Cursed Walnuts, just a habit. They're Cursed, what are they called? Runes. Cursed Runes. So I used to call them Walnuts. Right, so Hatai Ascendant, Leonis Tara, Enraged, Kuandara, Zulgoth, Scroll Reborn are here all the time, so no need to repeat myself from previous videos. Now, Vanalis. Interesting troop because it gives attack to the first two allies and gives life to the two weakest allies and then gives the 10 magic to the two strongest allies. So his spell does the exact opposite of what Ulor's does. Ulor steals or takes away th um, a certain amount of attack from the first two enemies and takes away life from the first two uh, from the weakest enemies and takes magic from the uh, the weak the weakest no the strongest <laughs> enemies I'm trying to think what the exact opposite is but that's actually quite effective when you use Ulor in the right place but Vanalis I've never seen this guy in a, in a team that's effective and I've got him but I've never been tempted to try and make a team with him so for that reason Hard to recommend Vanalis, even though that is quite a handy third trait. Entangle and fairy fire a random enemy by matching green gems. And you get bonus green too, but yeah, I've just never seen Vanalis so far in any effective team. In any way, shape or form, I'll go over the legendaries soon. Now, Voice of Orpheus. For me, has just got a whole load better. And I'll explain why in a minute, because he's normally regarded as one of the weaker mythics. Deals a lowish amount of damage to an enemy, boosted by all ally mana. Cleanse all allies, then give all other allies five mana. Now, the reason why he's got a lot more interesting to me is, and why I'm probably going to craft him today myself, is because of that third trait, which combined with the second one, means he's basically the ideal counter to the Elementalist class, which has been absolutely wrecking people's teams and guild wars lately. Like, Elementalist class has come along, and as a lot of people thought it would, it's just to change the way Guild Wars works, and there's um, a different strategies to be needed. The fact that his second trait is impervious, he's immune to all status effects, devour, lycanthropy, and mana burn, means that in that Elementalist class, when they get those four matches, which normally is going to burn, entangle, freeze, and stun you, he's not going to get stunned, which means he's going to keep that third trait, which means he can still cleanse all allies simply by matching yellow gems. That is an ideal defense and counter to the Elementalist class. And for that reason, I shall be crafting him today because I don't have him yet. His spell is a little bit weird in the fact that it's mixed in with his third trait. He's already got that part of his spell as a, as a trait, the cleanse all allies. But I don't know. You can't have enough cleanse, I suppose. It makes it clear that um, even if there's no yellow to collect, you can still get that cleanse. Xanathos is there all the time, so no need to do him. Alemagrim deals damage to all enemies, then creates nine purple gems boosted by burning enemies. 
an okay mythic does an okay amount of damage and if you get lucky with those purple gems it can self-charge itself to a certain degree as well so yeah okay but um, nothing too fantastic for me is a lemogrim and death again nothing fantastic death mark all enemies then deal a very low amount of scatter damage but boosted by his life which can make it a lot more significant the traits gain 50% bonus souls from battle undying immune to poison disease lycanthropy and death mark is okay an aspect of death steal two life from the first enemy at the start of each turn is too low really to be effective the thing is with death is there's so many defenses now to death mark there's so many cleanses in the team like a queen beatrix a four match just force of orpheus as we just saw just collect yellow and that cleanses everyone making 90 percent of that spell ineffective so death is a pretty poor mythic these days and that is it for the new mythics so the new mythics here today are death and emigrim voice of orpheus and vanalis so um a bunch of weak mythics for me today but um in a surprise announcement i de bet voice of orpheus never expected to get the uh, pick of the week but he does for me this week simply because that third trait combined with the second trait is just a fantastic defense to the now really annoying elementalist class on that uh, third trait that burns and tangles freezes and stuns everyone so there he is now let's take a really quick look at the legendaries we've got spring imp deals scatter damage and tangle all enemies and if the enemy an enemy dies gain eight magic the traits of gain bonus green mana and gain eight magic on green gems is pretty decent but overall this can work in a particular team i may show one later this week but spring imp is okay but again nothing worth crafting specifically especially when legendaries turn up in in uh, chests all the time you do not need to actually spend your hard-earned gems or diamonds on legendaries this guy is seeing lots of dwarf teams all the time stuns the last two enemies and deals damage to them boosted by allied dwarves and summons a random dwarf one of the main things about him though is all dwarf allies start with 50 percent mana which is another reason why you always see this guy in dwarf teams and Wrath, very effective troop. You see this guy in Guild Wars battles quite a lot and in PvP because he transforms blue to brown and yellow to skulls. So just the randomness of how the game starts is effective for the PvP sometimes or the just the AI in general. Then it enrages all allies and burns all enemies. Reflects 25% of skull damage and exploding two random gems when I deal skull damage are the best traits he has there. And Frost Feather deals damage to all enemies and if there's an ice storm curse all enemies curse is actually really effective as it says up there dispels positive status effects and resets and reduces the cumulative recovery chance of status effects all status immunities are ignored and can apply to impervious troops which is really relevant that's actually pretty decent but again nothing worth crafting there for me on the legendary side of things but yeah as i say like um in a surprise announcement in a bunch of weak mythics voice of orpheus is today's pick of the week for me i know my choices are sometimes like slightly frowned upon but i do look at things from a different angle from other people sometimes and particularly in this one because of that awesome cleanse all allies when matching yellow gems combined with impervious means he's a fantastic defense to the elementalist third trait right there's the video if you enjoyed it or found it useful be cool if you liked and subscribed and thanks for watching i'll be back later with my um team for this week's event bye for now